After my last rap session I did yesterday at 11, a lot of people said it's I suck. So I decided to just discontinue doing raps. Today is Dawah day, and the reason you're all here is we're going to be doing Dawah, which is a responsibility for all of us. And uh, before I end my speech, I have a surprise for you. So sit back and relax, sit tight, and wait for the surprise on the stage, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Allah has chosen you to come here to be a da'i. The purpose of this session today, this two hour, the golden ticket, uh, I know you're waiting for Muhammad Hijab, he flew in from England, UK. We have Sheikh Shanawi Alhamdulillah in the house, and he's already here, Alhamdulillah, and Imam Soheb Webb is on his way, he'll be here too. I have been the director of Islam for the last many years. I've been managing the Islam hotline for almost 22 years plus. And in these two decades, we've had hundreds and hundreds of shahadas, alhamdulillah. And the purpose of shahada is not just to celebrate or to show the glory that somebody's entered Islam. The purpose of shahada is to show that we save another soul from perish and destruction. You all are enjoying Islam. You were born into Islam. So you don't know the value of Islam, including myself. We don't really know the value of Islam because we, got, we inherited from our parents. We were born in a Muslim household. But an individual who enters into Islam after all these years of living in an environment that was very different from our environment, they do a lot of sacrifice, a lot of compromise. Very tough, it's not easy. As much as we say takbir, Allahu Akbar, somebody became Muslim, understand that they go through a lot of pain and anguish, separation from family and other things. And that is why the title of my talk right now is Reach Every Household with the Message of Islam. See, Allah SWT has chosen us American Muslims. Whether you were born here or whether you immigrated to this country from your home country, hometown, the job needs to be done. Why? Because there is no more Rasul, there is no more Prophet to come. Isn't that our Aqeedah? And remember, thousand years ago, 1400 and some 50 years ago in Medina, an incident took place where a Sahabi of Rasulullah Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he was sitting with the Prophet Muhammad Listen up, it's a very amazing story. He was sitting with our Prophet Muhammad just like this casual face-to-face, one-on-one. And Rasulullah told him, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, recite the Quran. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud immediately got shocked. Like the leader of humanity, the seal of all the prophets, Muhammad is asking me, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, to recite Quran. He said, Quran Quran How can I recite the Quran to you, Ya Rasulullah, when the Quran is revealed to you? You are the bringer of the Quran. Allah gave you the Quran. You recite, we learn from you. How can I re- recite in front of you? He felt shy, embarrassed. And Rasulullah told him, I love to listen from others. Hmm? I, this is the beauty of Quran. When you listen to the beautiful recitation, it mesmerizes your soul. It touches your heart. It melts you. So the amazing thing in the story is that Rasulullah did not tell him where to recite. Imagine if I tell one of you guys here, recite the Quran. The first thing you're going to ask me is, which surah? But Rasulullah said, just recite the Quran. And Abdullah ibn Masood, coincidentally, he chose himself to recite Surah Nisa, the fourth surah in the Quran. Surah Nisa, which means the woman, which talks about the rights of women, the marriage, and other issues in there. So he started reciting Surah Nisa. Also, ironically, this is the same surah, the first ayah, that every imam, every sheikh, maulana recites in khutbatun nikah. You know, the first ayah of Surah Nisa, we recite that when we're performing nikah. That ayah. It's because Rasulullah used to recite this ayah in khutbah nikah when he would perform the nikah between an, a man, man and a woman back then. So Abdullah ibn Masur started reciting from that first ayah of Surah Nisa and he went on and on. And this was just coincident that he chose, he chose that ayah and Rasulullah did not tell him to choose that. 
But he went on, and as the narration says, that he went on reciting and reciting. And you know how you've seen many Quran nights or many Qurra, when they recite the Quran, they're like so mesmerized. Sometimes they close their eyes when they're reciting on the microphone. They're so engrossed, you know, engrossed in the, in the beauty of the... So he was reciting, he was not looking at Rasulullah. And when he reached ayah number 41 in Surah Nisa, when he reached this ayah, um, he heard Rasulullah say, Hasbuk, 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 which in Arabic means sufficient, sufficient, meaning enough, enough. You're reciting from ayah number one, ayah 41, he stopped. So Abdullah ibn Masood says that, lo, behold, when I look up, because he was reciting probably today, when I look up, I see Rasulullah crying profusely. His beard is wet. And he was shocked. What did I do? I hope I didn't hurt, I didn't do recite something wrong. I mean, he's feeling scared and fearful that perhaps I did something, I messed up in the recitation and Rasulullah is crying. And you know, he, he, he's worried. He asked Rasulullah that why are you crying? And Rasulullah said, this ayah, 41, wahid wa arba'in, ayah 41. So it is very important. MashaAllah, we have Brother Muhammad Hijab in the house. Big round of applause for him. Please come here in the front, inshallah. They don't want to listen to me. They want to listen to you. So I know I'm the bone in the contention. You can have a seat here, inshallah. Sheikh Shinawi, Sheikh Shinawi over there. You can see with him. So, what is in ayah number 41 in Surah Nisa that made my and your and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa cry? Think about it. And I recite. Abdullah ibn Masood says, when I reached this ayah, Rasulullah told me, enough, enough, stop. And when I raise my head and I see a Rasulullah, he's crying profusely, the beard is wet. And when you look at this ayah, when you read the meanings of the words in this ayah, it tantalizes your soul, it sends a chill down your spine, it literally shakes you and shivers you, the gravity of situation that we have to realize. Listen to what Allah is saying in Surah Nisa, verse 41, which made our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam cry. Because there is a message in it for all the believers and especially the American Muslims living in America or the Muslims living in the West. There's a special message from our beloved Prophet Muhammad in this ayah. Allah says in this ayah 41 in Surah Nisa, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جَئْنَا مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجَئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا So Allah is addressing Muhammad in this ayah and saying, How will it be, O Prophet Muhammad Sallam, when we bring from every ummah a shaheed, a witness, a witness from every ummah on Yom Al Qiyamah that did you deliver the message of Allah? Did you tell the people of Allah? Did you tell the people about your Creator? Did you tell the people about your Lord? Every ummah will be coming with the shaheed. And Allah says, Wajahna bika. Bika means bi anta ya Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah is saying, I will bring you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on Yom Al Qiyamah. Put you in front of all the people on Yom Al Qiyamah, where there are zillions and zillions of people, not billions, not trillions, but zillions of people on Yom Al Qiyamah standing right there. And Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is brought by Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and say, You are a witness to mankind. Wajjana bika ala hawla shahida. That responsibility and burden on the shoulders of Rasulullah made him cry that how far will my message go I, he knew that he's gonna die he knew he's gonna leave this world but how will la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah reach to the people far and wide and beyond and until Yom Al Qiyamah 1455 years have gone or 60 years have gone in, 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 since his message has come to the world and we're still here standing on earth and there's more than 6 billion people who don't believe in Muhammad what are we doing are we sleeping in Hajjatul Wada, in the farewell Hajj, Rasulullah in his Khutbatul Hajj, he told the people over there sitting that Liubalig al Shahid al Ghaib, let the people who are present Balig al Ghaib, let them inform about La ilaha Allah to those who are Ghaib, who are absent. 
from that Hajjatul Wada until now, 1443 Hijri, me and you, we've been learning La ilaha illallah from one generation to another, to another, to another. Your grandfather told your father, your father told you, you're going to tell your son, and your son is going to tell their, his son, your grandson, and generations to come. This line will continue. There no, O oh son and daughter, know that your Prophet is Muhammad Sallallahu Know that your Lord is none other but Allah Jalla Jalalu wa Amma Nawal. يُبَلِّغَ الشَّهْدَ الْغَيْبِ And that's why in Hajjatul Wada, when he finished the khutbah, Rasul Sallam asked the people, and he asked them that, هَلَا بَلَّغْتَ Did I deliver the message? They all said, قَالُوا بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Again he said, هَلَا بَلَّغْتَ Did I deliver the message to you, O people, the Sahaba, my companions? And they all said together, بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّهُ Again, for the third time, he said, أَلَا بَلَّغْتَ and again, they all said in unison, Bala ya Rasulullah Yes, 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 you have delivered the message. Immediately then, Rasulullah pointed up to the sky, Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad. Just visualize that dramatic scene. It's Mecca, it's Hajjatul Wada. And Rasulullah is saying, Ya Allah, be witness. Ya Allah, be my witness. Ya Allah, be my witness that I have delivered the message to the people. But who's going to tell the people of this land, United States of America? There is no more prophet to come. The Sahaba, Kiram, Ridwan, Tawajmain, the companions of the Prophet are all dead in their graves. None of them are going to come back from their graves. Hey, let me take a ticket to New York City, just like Muhammad Hijab took a to New York City to go tell people. Let me take a ticket to Miami or Los Angeles or Seattle because I got to go tell people about my companion, my Prophet Muhammad Sallam. None of, no one is coming. So now you know why you are in America. You're not here to just have fun and enjoy. You are here for a reason and a purpose to deliver the message La ilaha illallah to far and wide to all the people. We are not missionaries. We don't proselyze. We just deliver the message. We just say what Allah has asked us to say in the Quran. And that is why Allah said to Rasul that بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ يَا يُوْ رَسُولُ يَا أَيُّ الرَّسُولُ This is Surah Ma'idah Ayah يَا يُوْ رَسُولُ بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ O Prophet of Allah, deliver, بَلِّغْ إِبْلَاغ تَبْلِيغ means deliver, inform, educate the people what has been revealed to you. فَإِنْ لَمْ What's that? فَإِنْ لَمْ فَإِنْ لَمْ I'll forget the end of the ayah is that if you do not deliver the message, then you have not. We are the followers of Muhammad Zalum. We have taken an oath. Do you know that? Whether you realize that or not, the moment you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Rasulullah, you have taken a qasam, an oath with our beloved Prophet Muhammad Zalum that I will inform others and people about you, Ya Rasul Sallam. Allah said about this in the Quran. You know the biggest misconception people have in the world of oh, Muhammad وسلم, is a prophet for the Arabs. Oh, Muhammad is a prophet for the Asians. Oh, Muhammad is a prophet for Africans. Oh, Muhammad is a prophet just for Muslims. He's not a prophet for other people. Khata, wrong. Memorize this ayah and memorize it clearly in your mind. Surah A'raf, Surah 7, verse 158, where Allah declares a mission statement. Allah gives a clear definition of who Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. Listen up. Allah says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا nas." We know in the ajaz of the Quran that here the khitab is for Rasul Sallam. Every time the ayah starts with قُلْ, it means Allah is ordering Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say. Like you have قُلْ Allah ahad, قُلْ عَضُوا رَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ يَا أَيُّهُ الْكَافِرُونَ And قُلْ, there are many ayahs that start with قُلْ. قُلْ means say. Meaning, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say. Say to the people, proclaim to the people, inform the people. Say what, Ya Allah? Qul ya ayyuhal nas. Say, oh mankind, oh human beings. Notice he did not say, Qul ya ayyuhal muslimin, oh muslimun. He did not say, Qul ya ahl al-kitab, oh people of the book. He says, Qul ya ayyuhal nas. Anyone who classifies themselves under the world of umbrella as a human being, a son of Adam and Eve, they are included in this ayah. What is the message? Allah says, Qul ya ayyuhal nas. إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Allahu Akbar This is Allah telling Muhammad Sallallahu in Surah Araf, Surah 7, verse 158 Inform the people, tell the people that I, Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Qurayshi 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Mecca, I am a messenger to all of you, Jamian. Yes, Rasulullah didn't come to America. Yes, he did not fly over here back then, 1400 years ago, to New York or LA or Seattle or Miami or Chicago or Houston. But we are here. We, the Ummati of Muhammad are here and alive and basking in the sunshine. It's about time we tell every Tom, Dick and Harry and Stephanie and Jennifer and Mary that Muhammad is your prophet as much as he is my prophet. This is very important. And that's the reason we're going to be doing the da'wah right now at the Inner Harbor. Make sure you get your t-shirts in the back, your brochures. That's the purpose of this session. This, this session is not a passive session where you just come and listen and take it out the other ear, do some clappings, do some takbir, and that's it. That's not the reason that our dear beloved brother Muhammad Hijab flew all the way from England to just hear a talk to you. We want to make this a proactive, dynamic session where, where you learn here, from Sheikh Shinawi, Imam Suhaib Weib, and, and inshallah from our brother Muhammad Hijab, you learn, and then we go out and put it to practice, put it to action. And when we put it to action, we see the results from the action. I've been managing the y Islam hotline for more than 22 years. Just me alone, in these two decades, I have stopped counting how many shahadas that I have given over the phone line. 877 y Islam, how can I help you? Yes, I have a question about Islam. And we answer, we talk. You know, the last I counted many years ago, it was more than 300. I stopped counting after 300. And the reason I'm saying is not to brag about myself, but just to tell you how thirsty and needy the people in this country are. Every day we get calls. Every day we get at least 25 to 30 calls a day on the hotline asking, who is Muhammad? What is the Quran? How do we know who is God? Who is Allah? How do we know there is a Lord? And many, many plethora of questions that we get every single day. And that's why Allah says in Surah Araf again in verse 6, فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Surely indeed we will question those who we sent to them and we will also question the messengers. Allah will ask the people of America, Allah will ask the people of this country inhabitants, did you learn about Muhammad sallallahu Did you learn about Allah the Lord? And if they say no, Allah will ask me and you, you Muhammad, Ahmed, Salman, Fatima, Zainab, you were there in Texas, you were there in New York, you were there in Florida, you were there in California, you were there in Seattle and other places. What did you do? Why didn't you inform them about Allah? Why didn't you inform them about Muhammad sallallahu just imagine, just imagine for a second, you're standing on Yom Al-Qiyamah and Allah asks you directly, one-on-one, -on -one, you, you, I know you, I am your God, Allah, why did you not inform your neighbors and the people in your school, in your colleges, in your workplaces, in your areas, in your neighborhood about Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu And if our answer is, Ya Allah, I was too busy. Busy in what? What are we busy in? What's stopping us from telling other people about Islam? We only need to educate them. And Islam is not just about standing out on the street and handing Qur'ans and, and, and brochures. Yes, that's one part of it. The real da'wah is living the da'wah, enacting the da'wah, meaning you live as a Muslim, a practicality, your personality, your persona, your behavior, your character, your akhlaq, your interactions, your mu'amilat, they impress the people, they impact the people, they influence the people. Recently, we've been advertising in all the households online through, uh, through Facebook and YouTube. We changed our strategy since COVID hit and everything was in lockdown. So we stopped doing billboards because there's no more cars running. So therefore, we started online advertisement. And in this online advertisement, we did these short, small ads that pop up on your Facebook feed or Instagram or on your uh, YouTube video thing. And we targeted zip codes that are away from any mega city. Any major city, we stayed away from that. Because every mega city, you have Muslims around there. You can bump into a Muslim. But what about a small town where there's only 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people and there's no Muslim over there? Listen to this story. I got a call. This is about a year and a half. It's about three, four months into the COVID when we started this uh, campaign first. I got a call from South Dakota. I don't want to mention the name for confidentiality, but this, this person, this brother, 79 years old, a war veteran from the Iraq war back in the Gulf War in 1990. 79 year old, he called. And I answered, thank you for calling 8 Samson White Slam. How can I help you? This is Ahmed speaking. Yes, sir, I have a question about the Quran. Right? How did you learn about us? Oh, I was going through my Facebook and I saw I can get a Quran. Sure. 
Long story short, we continued talking for almost an hour. After an hour, he started burst into crying, just crying, sobbing. I got scared. I said, excuse me, sir. I'm really sorry. I apologize. Did I hurt you? Did I say something wrong? Please forgive me. And he gathered his emotionality. He said, no, 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 no. It's nothing against you, sir. Nothing. I said, okay, can I help you with something? What happened? He sighed and he said, you know, Mr. Ahmed, I am 79 years old, living here in South Dakota. There's not a single mosque here. There's not a single Muslim here in my town. Today, I just opened my Facebook feed, and after talking to you, Mr. Ahmed, I found God. How do I become like you? I said, simple. Just say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, or Ashhadu an Rasulullah, and Mr. So and so, you're a Muslim. He said, Really? That's it? I don't have to go to Mecca, Saudi Arabia. I don't have to go to Egypt. I don't have to wear some new clothes. I don't have to wear this nice kufi. By the way, I just bought this yesterday because it was nice in the bazaar and he said it's going to look good on it. Does it look good? Or should I change it? Okay. I said, No, you don't have to do that, sir. You can just do it right here on the phone. Again, he started crying. He said, it's so sim he said, it's so simple. Islam is so simple. I said, yes, who said Islam is so difficult? And repeat after me. And he repeated. And he repeated. And he said, thank you. I found God, Allah, after 79 years. But I have a question. Where are the Muslims? I said, I'm sorry. I don't have an answer for that. I don't know why Muslims didn't reach you in South Dakota. Eureka, California. You can Google it. Another small town in California. Husband and wife, 39-year-old, 35-year-old wife, both called. I answered the call. We talked about almost an hour and a half. We had a lot of discussion, a lot of questions, back and forth debate. At the end, they said, how do we become a Muslim? I said, simple. Just say the shahada. Can we do it together or we have to do it separate? I said, both of you together. Open the speakerphone. Repeat after me. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah, they're both husband and wife, Muslim. South Carolina, I forget the city, a small town, Bible Belt, just called about six months ago, mother and daughter, mother 36, 35 year old, daughter 14 year old. She said, sir, we've been searching for truth for the last so many years. I saw your Facebook feed on my, it says I can get a Quran. I said, yes, we talked about the Quran, we talked about Tawheed. She said, how can I become a Muslim? I said, simple, just say after me, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Allah. Can my daughter become a Muslim? She's only 14. I said, yes, sure. Bring her on the phone. We give the daughter and the mother shahada. We mail them a shahada package. Why Islam gives a free new Muslim welcome package to everyone who converts. We take care of them. We mentor them. We assign them a mentor. You had the moderator here, Brother Azad. He's one of the greatest mentors here in the DMV area. We have mentors around the whole country that teach the new Muslims the salah, the ibadah, the tahara, and everything. We give the whole nine yards to them. Come join the revolution, so to speak. But come join the club, join Y Islam. Wherever you come from, whichever city, whichever state, join Y Islam. Get out there, inform the people about Islam. Tell them before you die, because this will be a question that we must and must answer. Because Allah has told us in the Quran that for we are Mursal, we are messenger of the messenger of Allah. You know that? We are the messenger of the messenger of Allah. Who is the messenger of Allah? Muhammad Sallam, and we are his messenger fi America, in America. We have to inform the people, we have to join together, we have to band together, we have to collaborate together. And that's why, whether it's UK, whether it's Australia, whether it's Europe, whether it's America, wherever we are, we all Muslims living in areas of minority, we need to join together and just inform. And, and whenever somebody asks me, why are you trying to convert America? Why are you trying to change the landscape of America? Why are you trying to brainwash America? No, sir, we're not doing anything. We're not converting anyone. We're not missionaries. We're not proselytizing Islam here. We are just delivering the message. And after delivering the message, if someone wants to convert, we facilitate for them.